You are now finished with the charging station for the time being. Now it's time to lay the wire so that the mower doesn't fall into the pond or take off on its own, or the like, and so that it can always find its station. There is a boundary and guide wire as well as fastening pegs. Stake out the mowing area with the boundary wire. As soon as the mower comes close to the wire, it gets a signal from it. Then it turns and continues mowing in another direction. The other wire, the guide wire, shows the robot the way to the charging station when the battery is empty. However, the guide wire can be used to specifically guide the robot into certain areas in the garden. Before you really get started laying the wire, there's something quite important. The guide and boundary wires have to be connected at a location at the other end of the garden. In my case, it will be here. The boundary wire comes first. Start with the charging station. Secure it with 50 centimeters of additional wire so that everything fits at the end. With the ruler, it's super easy to keep the right distance. Use 35 centimeters in front of solid walls so that the mower doesn't bump into it when it turns. On the other hand, a distance of 30 centimeters is enough for flower beds and gravel paths but don't use any less. Otherwise, the mower might drive over the edge and get stuck. In addition, it's important for the flower bed or gravel path to be at the same level or lower than the mowing surface. Otherwise, the blades may be damaged. 10 centimeters is sufficient for paths or flagstones and so on. You see, the mower currently turns around on the path and cuts the grass right to the edge. If the path or flagstones are actually placed in the grass, then you can simply let the robot drive over it. Once again, keep 35 centimeters away from the pond and also protect it with a 15 centimeter high barrier. Simply hammer in the pegs every 70 centimeters, then pull the wire until it's smooth. Secure the wire additionally on the uneven places. The wire really has to lie directly and flat on the ground so that the mower doesn't break anything when it drives over it. You can also bury the wire up to 20 centimeters deep in the ground. In any case, the grass will soon grow over it. Also surround individual obstacles. When laying the wire to an obstacle, don't hammer in the peg completely. That way, you can secure the wire with the same peg on the return path. Oh yeah, when going around an obstacle, start with the side from where the wire comes. This is important so that the wire is not crossed over. That shouldn't happen under any circumstances, otherwise there will be trouble later on. Use the same pegs on the return path. The start and the end of the circle should be as close as possible to each other then the signals from the wire cancel each other out. Otherwise, the mower would perceive the wire at the position as a boundary and not mow over it. The mower recognizes quite a bit, even without a boundary. If it bumps into something, it simply turns around. If the tree has visible roots, then it might happen that the mower gets snagged or gets stuck on them. At the end, at the place where you plan to connect the boundary and guide wires, there is one thing you shouldn't forget. Lay a 10 centimeter loop. Leave around 50 centimeters of extra wire at the charging station for the connection. The guide wire comes after the boundary wire. With it, you can specifically direct the mower to the remote areas of the garden, and it shows the mower the way back to the charging station when the timer gives the command or the battery is empty. Here are a few tips in advance. Lay the wire diagonally on slopes so that the mower can mow there optimally as well. And also so that you can safely guide the robotic mower to secluded areas. You then set the remote starting points along the guide wire. That way, the robotic mower knows how often it has to mow remote areas in the garden. So, right from the start. First of all, thread the wire in the designated channel under the ground plate and lead it straight out by at least one meter. Then lay it using the pegs to the planned connection point with the boundary wire. 
at places where it is narrow and the mower orientates itself by the guide wire when passing through, make sure that the guide wire is 20 centimeters away from the boundary wire on the left when looking from the charging station and at least 40 centimeters on the right. On the right, however, the more the better. At the connection point, cut the guide wire and then cut the previously laid boundary wire on the loop. Then connect the ends of the three wires in the white-blue coupler. To do this, insert the three ends into the holes in the coupler as far as they will go and then squeeze it together with pliers. It's important to squeeze the coupler together here very tightly, otherwise the connection might not be made. The charging station would then start flashing. By the way, the coupler is filled with grease to make it weatherproof. Finally, secure everything with pegs. By the way, there are many possible examples in the operator's manual for garden shapes with corresponding instructions and tips for the installation.